Okay, so let's say we have a key, and it's a secret key that shouldn't be revealed to anyone, but the possession of the key is very important. So it could be a symmetric key for encrypting a file, or it could be a private key that's associated with a public key. But the last thing that we need to, we want to do is to be able to expose that uh, key to anyone else apart from ourselves. So let's look at a method uh, called zero knowledge proofs that allows us to be able to verify that we have this key, but not actually reveal it to anyone. And the method that we'll look at is called zero is called ZK Snarks, and it will prove through a smart contract whether we have the possession of this key or not. <coughs> Okay, so one way of doing this is that this is our key, is that we can hash the key to provide a scrambled version of it. So a typical hashing method is SHA-256. So we'll take a hash of the key, and then what we need to do is to prove that the key, the secret, relates to the hash version of the of the secret. Okay, and the method that we'll use to be able to implement this is with Zoctetes. And Zoctetes allows us to be able to create these non-interactive zero-knowledge proofs, known as ZK snarks, and build <coughs> a solidity contract that can be deployed to Ethereum. In this way, we can create an on-chain solution to be able to prove that we have knowledge of a secret and all we have to do is to reveal the hash version of that secret. <coughs> With Zoctetes, we can create a small script. In this case, we have four private values. And those private values, A, B, C, and D, are 128-bit values that can be brought together to be able to represent our secret. These values will not be exposed within the, the smart contract. Then we have two public values which relate to the hash that we will produce of the secret. <coughs> Those are two 128-bit values, so we need two of them to be able to create our SHA-256 hash. Okay, so we're going to feed in private values of our, of our secret and then also public values of the hash of that secret. And hopefully we're going to prove that. So we prove it by returning two values here related to the private value, secret value that we have, and then we'll check to see if they're the same as the values that we have for our hash. Okay, so the first thing that we do is we call up the Zoctetes here and we compile <coughs> our little um, Zoctetes program that we have here. That's worked fine. So now what we'll do is that we create what's called a witness. So in this case, I'll just go for a very simple input secret of uh, 0, 0, 0, 97. 97 as an integer represents the ASCII character of an A, uh, which is also 61 in hexadecimal. <coughs> Now what we've got to do is to be able to uh, work out the hash version of uh, that data <coughs> and split it up into two fields. Both fields are represented as integer values. So I've created a little Python program here. I'll just let you see it there. Okay, so this is uh, our little uh, Python program <coughs> to be able to compute the uh, the hash uh, outputs into integer values. Okay, so here's my hash value, uh, all those zeros. Uh, so that's 128 bits, 128 bits, 128 bits, and 128 bits, giving us our input hex value. 61 is an A in uh, in and hexadecimal and we're using a big endian format so the most significant data goes at the end 
we'll create a hash of that and then what we'll do is that we'll take the, the digest, the hash, the SHA-256 and then we'll split it up into two 16 byte uh, uh, byte arrays. And then from there we'll convert the byte arrays back into integers in a big in a big Indian format to produce the two integer values that will produce our hash value. Okay, so let's try and run that to see what we get for this code. And the values we get are 4, 5, so on, and 8, 4, 4. Uh, those values in hexadecimal are 22 and 33 there, if we want to recall them back again. <coughs> okay, so I've just made the note of them here. So for that input data, this is the two values that we have for our hash. So we'll just feed that in to make sure that we can create our witness. So that's fine there. And then we'll do in that one and we'll just paste that in and we'll just compute and it's been successful. If we put in an incorrect value of the hash, then we should get an assertion failure as we see there. So let's actually try it to make sure that it's working again and everything's fine. Now what we need to do is we need to create what's called a proving key and a verification key. Uh, this takes a little bit of while, but it's a once only thing. And this will be used in the smart contract to be able to create our ZK snarks. So we just let it run for a little minute <coughs> and it gives us a little message to say it's going to take a while, but uh, hopefully it will get there quite soon. Okay, so just to tell you that I've got Ganache running here uh, for my own private uh, blockchain. So we'll, we'll deploy the smart contract once it's created onto Ganache and we'll be able to test it, hopefully. Okay, so it just takes a little minute to be able to get this to run. So remember what we're doing here is that we have a secret and we take a hash of that. And now what we want to do is to create a zero knowledge proof that proves that we know the secret. So that's fine. So that's the keys there. That's the format that they're in an adjacent format. That's fine. So next what we'll do is we'll go to, we're going to generate the, the proof. So this will generate the zero knowledge proof that relates to the value of X, which is just an A value here. And that that is related to the, uh, the input or the output and uh, this is the zero knowledge uh, proof here so what we'll do is we'll just copy that because we need to be able to take a copy of that for later okay so the format of this is uh, we have our input data here and we have our uh, zero knowledge proof here so th these are the values which are hiding the um, the secret values here so just let me make that a little bit bigger so you can see it better okay so there's the values there we'll just get them back in a little minute to test these are the input values and these are the um, the values that we'll need to be able to create our our test okay so there we go we're going to export it as a solidity contract and this is a solidity contract here Okay, so you'll find there's verification keys and so on, and this is the whole contract. This is it reading in the two values here, and there's it reading in the, the proof that we've created. Okay, so this is the proof, and this is the input data, which is the two parts of the hash that uh, relate to the hash of the secret. Okay, so let's go ahead uh, and deploy this now. So uh, I'm using uh, the Solidity co uh, compiler here, and I'll just go ahead and compile it. Everything's fine. Uh, it's managed to compile that, okay. So now what I'll do is I'll connect to my uh, local blockchain. So I'm running Ganache, so it's picked that up, okay. Just let us check that that relates to that account and it does BA and BA there. Okay, so I'll go ahead. I need to select verifier for my contract and I'll deploy that. So it's been deployed. Uh, it would have cost me a little bit of ether to be able to deploy it and to get it mined. But now we'll, we'll go ahead and get it tested. Okay, so we need a tuple. 
So let's see if we can find our tuple. And there it is there. And we'll just paste that in there. And now what we need is our input data, which is the split of the hash. It's there. Okay, so there's our data in and we'll call up our smart contract. And yes, it's worked. We get a true back. But if I put in the wrong data, I get a false. Okay, so this is a way that we can actually prove our uh, our Xeno knowledge proof. So now that we've tested it, let's deploy it to the to a test network. So now we'll go and deploy it to the Robston test network. So for this, I need my MetaMask wallet. I'll confirm that and then we'll go and deploy it onto the test network. Uh, so it takes a little little minute to be able to get the miners to be able to pick up uh, the smart contract, but they've done it That's quite quick. So now we'll go and look our uh, contract on, on the blockchain. And here it is here. Okay, so everything's fine. The first thing that we do is that we'll be able to verify uh, the, the contract. So this is the code here, if you're interested, the byte code, and uh, you can have a look at the op code if you, if you want there. But we'll go ahead and we'll uh, verify it. So I think we use 8, 0.87 for the compiler, and we'll go for an MIT license. And that's fine. So now what I need to do is to be able to go back here and I need to connect, I need to copy the Solidity code into there. And I'll just check that's the right code. Yeah, all looks good. So now what we can do is to then, I'm not a robot, and then we'll go ahead and hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, it will be successful because what it does is it, it compiles the 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 code that we've pasted here and checks against the code which was uh, submitted and it's worked okay so we've now got uh i've got a smart contract there for verifier that's great so we'll go back to our smart contract and now we'll test it Okay, so here we go. So we'll go back here as we did before and we'll paste that to pull in for our proof and then we'll get our hash that's split into two. Okay, and then we'll put, paste that in there and then fingers crossed, yes, it's what. So we can see our smart contract is working very well here. If I now put the wrong query in, then I get a false then. Okay, so that shows uh, the the zero no a uh, zero knowledge proof. So the great thing with this is that we can do a lot off chain, and then when we want to verify something, we can actually do a zero knowledge proof within our smart contract in Ethereum. Okay, thank you.